What is up, wrestling fans? How you guys doing? Leo Rush is posted or has posted. We've um, a lot of you guys sent me the tweet of Leo Rush posting that he's leaving AEW in February. You know, it's weird because when I hear Leo, let's start with the good stuff first. Let's start with the good stuff first. I'm going to be nice first before I flip out. I, I don't know what to say about this guy, and I and, and now I don't know if he became an a hole. Because he found out he was going to be released, so he figured, well, I'm just going to burn the bridges down. If that's the case, then I have less of a problem, I guess. The only thing is he lost some will with the fans. Um, but let's just say, let's just go to the posting. Um, Leo Rush retired about 7,000 times now as a, as a nobody wrestler. I'm a free agent. I, I, I half expected him to say that he's retiring. On February, my contract will expire. I'll become a free agent for bookings. Here's my blah, blah, blah. Well, I'll pay you $200 to come on my show, Leo Rush, and, uh, you know, for 20 minutes and uh, explain yourself. Now, part of me, when I watch Leo Rush, he's got this light about him that I love, and he seems like this amazing guy, and I enjoy him. And um, But then there's this other... But let's start with the positive. He's a great in-ring performer, right? Great in-ring performer, great talker on the mic, and he's got great energy. So that's all the right stuff there. The bad stuff is he's a midget, and that he, but that's not even, you know, that's not a big deal. You can be small, tall, big, whatever. They come in all shapes and sizes. That doesn't matter to me, really. It doesn't matter how small he is. I can still love him. So that doesn't matter to me, but, but, Let's go to the real negative. And the negative is that he, he burns every bridge. You know, I, I thought for a while that this guy was just keeping it real. And I was like, man, this guy keeps it real as fuck. Like, he's, yeah, you know, he's going to burn his bridge with WWE. But I bet he, I bet you we always say, why don't people stick up for themselves at WWE? Why don't these people attack WWE and say, no, listen, I ain't no bitch. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to call this out. I'm going to fight for what I believe in instead of just going along with it like most of the WWE wrestlers do now. So I thought for a second, all right, maybe he's a bold guy, and he actually said, you know what, F this, I'm real. But after experiencing what he's done, he's just always bitching about this, that, or the other thing, um, you know, always crying about something or other, this, that, or the other thing, you know, the swole stuff, now this stuff, and now he's leaving, and he called out Tony Khan, which is like, you just got there, dude, you just got to AEW, and you're calling out your owner? Like, it's like, dude, like the owner of the company, you're calling him out after barely being there and him giving you a job and everything. It just, it just, this guy's fucked is, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm sick of people asking me, where is he going to go? I don't give a shit because wherever he goes, he'll fuck it up. Wherever he goes, somebody won't like him and then he'll get crazy on Twitter or something. That That's what's going to happen. You know what I mean? So, like, what's the point in being like, where is he going to go? Uh, will he go back to W? Who cares? You know, and some people compared him to Enzo. Like, oh, Enzo was kind of a problem, too. Yeah, well, Enzo, I don't remember him going on Twitter all the time and being like, I'm retiring for the 900th time. Great, good, retire. You never did anything but win a cruiserweight title. You know what I mean? So go retire. I don't care. You know what I mean? This guy had a lot of potential, but that's all we ever talk about is potential this, potential that. He, his, his best time was on the indies when he works for himself because he obviously can't work for anybody. He doesn't want to work for anybody. I posted on Twitter, I wrote, the biggest grifter in the wrestling world, the rumors must be true. Now we know it's him. And, you know, it's like, dude, and I wonder if this is like a victimhood mentality that the guy has because, again, like I said, um, the man or the whatever you want to call the man in the country of America has convinced tons of people, uh, regular people, minorities, any, lots of people. They've convinced people that they they they're up against it. You know what I mean? In all these in all these ways that like you actually that's all you obsess over and think about. You know what I mean? Like they were basically everybody was calling Tony Khan a racist. It's like what? Like it's it was just so weird, man. People like this, like this fucking person. Let's put this person on camera now. I was at Costco, and this, mind you, like you have to wear a mask to get into Costco now, like especially in Orange County, like because of how much because we're stupid. COVID there. Um, people were still that won't protect you guys. 
stupid and taking off their masks while they were in like inside Costco. Um, but this woman is in the which is annoying because if there's a rule that you can't wear a mask, like what? Why are you taking it off then? So that is stupid. It's like, so why are we doing this? Like why don't we just fucking not wear them? How about that? Produce like refrigerator area, and the mask is off, and this bitch has the audacity to cough with the mask off. Like, this shit is never going away, and the only way that, like, I am going to be okay is if I leave America. Because y'all are just so dumb! It amazes me that we're two years into this fucking pandemic, and people still don't know how to wear a mask properly. Like, cover your nose, like, put it over your mouth. Like, are you stupid? Um, well, I do agree that she is right that nobody seems to wear a mask right, but... I don't know if I can agree with football face fatso here either, Um, but keep being a sheep and obsessing about putting the mask over your stupid, ugly face. I think you're just mad that you can't cover up your fucking horrific fucking rhinoceros face. And so like you're like, oh, man, I liked it when I had the mask on. I think maybe a guy would talk to me or a girl would talk to me. But at this point, no one's talking to Triple Chin McGee, okay? Just like... You know, a lot of these spoiled brats everywhere. Like I said, man, th- this country has conditioned people to be idiots, morons, and um, it's just it amazes me. The victim mentality. You see, the man, the man, the rich elite, the man, the rich elite, and the rich elite can be any race of people, but the man, and specifically white people, um, have convinced you, which is what they wanted to do. Don't you understand? This is like a reverse psychology thing. See, you are up against it in many different ways, depending on who you are, what you look like. Everybody has things that they're up against, no matter what they look like and whatever. It's going to happen. That's the way it is. Unfortunately, it's stupid, but that's what happens. But what the elites and the rich people up here have done is they've convinced and conditioned all of you to think, oh, if I fail at something or if I don't get accepted at something or if I don't win at something, oh, there's a reason. You know why. You know, it's because of this oppression of that's happening to me or this is happening to me, that has happened. Ah! Like, and basically you end up sabotaging your own life and career because nobody wants to work with you, talk with you, or deal with you when you're a spoiled psychopath who thinks that you deserve things. And uh, that's my point, man. That's why people got to stop buying into this. They have conditioned you for failure and you don't even realize it. You don't realize it. You think you're speaking up and you're making change, but you're not speaking up. You're speaking up, but you're not making change. The only change you're making is the change to your own career and your own life. It's going to be a bad change. And that's my point in my tweet here that I talked about. If you allow yourself to be paranoid about the race card, and who's getting what in AEW, you will fail. You know who doesn't seem to care about the race card, I mean, I think, is Jade Cargill and several other people. I don't think Red Velvet's cared, really. I think sometimes Brandy Rhodes, you know. But Brandy Rhodes is one of the elite that's controlling, that's making you fail and you don't even know it. She's one of the people that goes, you know how it was for us and like that sort of thing. Like That is the thing that hinders other people. Um, if you work hard and become undeniable, you will win. That's my point. If you work hard and you become undeniable, you will win. Victim mentality is why many blow up, get fired, or are miserable. The man has you controlled, believing you're a victim. That is 100% what's happening to most people who fail. They're screaming that I shouldn't be failing, and it's this is the reason. But that's an excuse. Be undeniable. How about Eminem? How about a white rapper like Eminem? So many white rappers came up or tried to be white rappers, and they just failed because they probably weren't good, most of them. They weren't good, but also the second they weren't good, they got shit on, and they went, oh, man, I don't know. I shouldn't be doing this. I'm scared to do this. Uh." Like, And they were like, I'm white. This is weird. You know, nobody likes this. But... They failed. Every one of them failed. Sure, it was talent. Talent was a big part of it. But it's also like, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. My early stuff wasn't that great. Then it was pretty good. Now it's really good. I'm going to keep going. It's undeniable. You can't deny me. That's why Dr. Dre and people like that signed Eminem, a pale white guy, 
I don't care what their point was. I don't care if they were businessmen who were like, this white guy is going to be huge because of white people. Like, they're going to love him. I don't care what the reason is. The bottom line is he caught people's attention for what he was doing because he was undeniable. If I get up on stage as a white guy and wasn't that good and I was rapping, Dr. Dre wouldn't have been like, this is great. Dr. Dre would be like, man, look at that fucking corny ass white fucking guy. He sucks. Fucking guys, this is why they don't rap, you know? And they'd, and they'd laugh or something like that. You know what I mean? But if you're really good, then a guy like Dr. Dre sees you and goes, oh, damn, like this guy's, this guy's actually got something. This is crazy. And it's undeniable. That's how a lot of people get through people who are ignorant and stupid, like a group of guys who are like maybe a group of hockey players. You know what I mean? Somebody who they, they didn't think would play hockey with them was walking down the street. You know what I mean? They got an extra stick and and they need another guy to play back in the 80s. And a couple of people walk by and, you know what I mean, they they, they only shout out to the white people. And they go, hey, hey, dude, like, want to play hockey? And they go, no, man, I go, well, I'm going home, whatever. Or maybe they get one guy to play and he's not very good at all. He's terrible. And then he has to go home. And then they, they didn't shout out to the black guy that walked by. One black guy walks by. They, they didn't shout out to him. Then he shouts out to them He goes, and, and he's like, Hey, I'll take that guy's spot. And then they're like, all right. Same thing with a white guy playing basketball in a black neighborhood. You know what I mean? That stuff happens all the time. You know what I mean? If you go, you know, you hear a bunch of guys on the court bitching. You know, there's a bunch of dudes on the court bitching. A bunch of black guys, really good. They're playing fucking, they play every day. They're badass. And your skinny ass walks by and... They're like, man, now we don't. Now we have uneven teams. What the fuck, man? Don't go, you know. And then you're like, hey, I'll take a spot, you know. And the group of guys are like, fucking Pee Wee Herman, you gonna take a spot? You know what I mean? They're just like, this is fucking. This guy's ridiculous. And then if you get out there, and you start draining threes and dribbling around people, those guys' perception of you starts changing, and you become undeniable. And you earn respect from people. Because maybe they were shitting on you when you were walking up to the court. Maybe they were shitting on you during the beginning of the game. Maybe you missed your first shot and they shit on you. And then you started playing well. And then people went, oh, like he's actually pretty good, man. All my, preconce my preconceived notions are wrong. Um, whether it's hockey or whatever sport or whatever relation. Maybe it's painting. It doesn't even matter. Race doesn't matter. It just matters painting. You know what I mean? Maybe a bunch of guys are sitting around at a at some giant gala thing and, you know what I mean, they're painting and they're wearing all these, you know, crappy stuff and some guy with a suit comes walking by. You know what I mean? And they're like, what do you want? You want to buy a piece? Like, what's going on? No, I want to paint. You want to paint? Like, you know, what I mean? it's, you, it's these things, man. You, if you feel that you're less than everybody else, you're going to probably be less than everybody else. If you feel like there's something against you and you really can't, you're not going to be able to overcome it or you're or you're always going to bring it up and have this chip on your shoulder, you, you're probably going to have trouble. Now, if you can harness that chip on your shoulder and you can focus it in a positive energy in, into like, into that positive energy that helps you, you can really harness it and really, you know, have a powerful whatever you're doing. You'll have, you'll have a lot of power in what you do. Or even if you even if you fail at what you're specifically doing, you'll have the drive to move to pivot to another thing really quickly. Like, okay, I failed at this, but I, I'm ready to go on something else. Here we go. And I think Leo Rush does have that. That's the thing is, I think he does have that pivot ability. He's ready to go no matter what. He's ready to go. Okay, you ready? To let me go, AEW. I'm ready to go to the next thing. But I hope he figures it out, man. Or I would love to hear his side of the story on this. Maybe I'm incorrect, and maybe we're, maybe a lot of us are incorrect. Because I've heard a lot of you guys complaining about him. I, I mean, lots of people are, like, done with him or annoyed by him at this point. There are some people that still stand by him, though. But um, I would love to hear his point of view, man. And maybe he's misunderstood a bit. But I just don't... And, and not that I think, like, hey, suck up to your boss. You know, suck up to your boss. But, I mean, give me the... How, how bad was WWE and Vince McMahon versus Tony Khan? All I know is Leo Rush seemed to treat them both similar on social media. You know? Complete disrespect to Tony Khan. Disrespect to Vince and WWE, but, I mean, they disrespected the shit out of him. So that, to me, I saw. 
I really haven't seen how AEW has disrespected him. But maybe they did, and I don't, I don't know about it. I don't know. I would love to know the truth. and give the, I give everyone the benefit of the doubt, man, because I really don't know the full story. I don't know it. But from the, I'm just saying the perception of us looking at Leo Rush and what he's complained about online, talked about, said, you know, and his reactions, actions, and everything, this doesn't seem good, you know? I don't know. Leo Russ reaches for the brass ring this Sunday at GCW. So we know Leo Rush is going to GCW. So we'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens. I I I hope he I hope he does I hope he does well, man. I hope he comes out of this whatever he's in, or maybe he's not, maybe he's happy. Maybe he's like, dude, I'm 100% keeping it real. I have no problem. Maybe that's what he thinks or he knows. I don't know. I just feel like this guy should have been a bigger star or should have had a bigger spot. And that's not all his fault. I think a lot of it's WWE's fault. Um, but then, but again, like I said, we're going to go spinning in circles here, but leave your comments down below. What you think about Leo rush? What do you think about what he's done? What he's doing? Whose fault is this WWE? Leo Rush, Tony Khan, AEW. What do you think about Leo Rush? And uh, whoever, if anybody drops a super thanks down below, I will make sure to pin it to the top of this video, man. I hope you watch the whole video. I'm going to be live tonight for, um, probably live tonight for the UFC. Uh, that'll, that'll be a fun party tonight, man, if we're up for that. I'll be here probably, and I'll be live, and I'll see you guys then. Shout out to the to Mikel who retained the monetize this championship last night in my cash in. I failed, despite the fun from all you guys, the drops from everybody. Shout out to Shell and Sith Negan, the top uh, donators last night, and everybody for hanging out last night. Famous B was in the house at the end of the show. If you missed that, go back and check it out. Timestamp the show. It was good, uh, good time. And one thing is is true. Leo Rush is fire in the ring, and great on the mic. Let's see what Leo Rush does next. Maybe we can get him on the show at some point and he can tell me how I'm a dummy. You know? He's a father of three, too. That's the thing, man. I want him to be able to take care of his kids. Not that it's my job to tell him what to do. I mean, I barely can do what I'm doing for my three kids. So what am I talking about? But I got three kids. I think Leo has two or three as well. And so I, I, I root for him because I'm sure he's an awesome dad. You know what I mean? And he's an entrepreneur, I think, a lot like I am. And we get bored easily. I know that about entrepreneurs. Um, they get, they'll get kind of bored if they're too controlled. Um, I know I've got ADHD and ADD or whatever, and I'm all over the place. And he may be something similar. So I feel like I've got a. I'm probably being extra critical on Leo Rush because he probably reminds me a lot of myself. Probably what it is. It's probably a little projection going on. But I'm not sure. We'll see. Leave it in the comments down below. Here's some other videos popping up. Go take a look at them. And I'll see you live tonight for the UFC coverage.